G'day One World Fly Squad, welcome back to another Thursday Trip Report. So as you might notice on the video title, this is not a normal Thursday Trip Report. Instead, I'm going to list a bunch of reasons that why Australia needs Virgin Australia. And also a bunch of reasons why I myself love Virgin Australia so much. Now before I go on further, I might as well give you some very basic background information about this airline. So despite the name Virgin, it's not entirely a British company. Virgin Australia is owned by the Nanshan Group, HNA Group, Singapore Airlines, Air Tihad Airways and the Richard Branson Virgin Group. So it's not a Middle Eastern or a Chinese airline. It's a very international, globalised Australian company. A proud Australian airline with a workforce of over 10,000 talented, friendly and amazing Aussies. On the 20th of April 2020, when the curve in Australia has flattened down, Virgin Australia announced that they're going to go into a voluntary administration. But what is a voluntary administration? In Australia, it's a process whereby an insolvent company, so in this case Virgin Australia, is placed into the hands of a voluntary administrator, whose role is to investigate the company's affairs, to report to the creditors, so banks, and to recommend to creditors whether the company should enter into something worse, for instance, liquidation. So voluntary administration is not yet the worst because it's a vital time for the airline to carefully assess its future and financial position. You would have heard that some airlines like Air Italy that went into liquidation. Liquidation is to wind up everything and bring the company to an end. Ciao. So right now there's still hope. There's still hope that Virgin Australia will survive this global pandemic. The Australian government or the state government still have the time to offer Virgin Australia money to let them stay afloat. Some of the most noticeable news recently is that the Queensland government wants to offer Virgin Australia 200 million Australian dollars of funding for them to keep flying. And why the Queensland government? They want Virgin to have their headquarters remain in Brisbane. Whereas in New South Wales, they also want to offer Virgin Australia money. But there's one seemingly tiny but yet annoying term. The New South Wales government wants Virgin to move its headquarters to the new Western Sydney airport. Anyhow, I'm not saying that a particular government should support Virgin Australia during this global pandemic. There's always costs and benefits for investing. And I'm sure that the government and other potential investors know the best. Now, after 148 seconds of nonsense, I'll now talk about why Australia need a second airline, Virgin Australia, and why I think the benefits overweigh the cost. So here's my reason number one, and it's the most prominent and the obvious one. Pricing and competition. Before the global pandemic, flying within domestic Australia is really expensive. With only two full-service airline, Qantas and Virgin, there's not much competition. For example, if I'm going to fly from Perth to Sydney, which is from the west to the east coast of Australia, I have only two full-service airlines to pick from, Qantas and Virgin Australia. And the return airfare in economy class is shown on the screen. If I was going to do the same thing in America, from LA to New York, it's going to cost me this much with the following airlines, United, Delta and American Airlines. Notice that all options from Los Angeles to New York is cheaper than flying from Perth to Sydney even though the distance from LA to New York is longer than Perth to Sydney. And that is because in the US they have three major airlines compared to the two in Australia. If you're not convinced, let's look at Canada. If you're going to fly from Vancouver to Toronto, this is how much you have to pay with the only major airline in Canada, Air Canada. Now everyone should see the problem that our friends in Canada are facing. It's too expensive to fly from the East Coast to the West Coast because Air Canada is the only predominant airline over there. They're basically playing Monopoly, having hotels in Mayfair and Park Lane. And then if you look into Australia, there's one more airline, Qantas and Virgin Australia. And there's such a huge difference in terms of the money you pay to fly. Not only it is a lot cheaper to fly in Australia than in Canada. In Canada, you get no baggage allowance and probably no meal as well for the lowest price that you pay, which I just showed you on the screen. Where in Australia, when you fly Qantas and Virgin Australia between the East and West Coast, you get all of them. And that is because there's competition. Qantas worry about Virgin might be better, so they offer more. And this goes on and on. Flying within the US is cheaper than flying within Australia and Canada. Although you might not get a baggage allowance if you pay for the lowest fare between LA and New York, and that's the fare I just showed you earlier with Delta, American and United, you get better services and you always get the best planes. United fly the Boeing 787-10 within those cities, American fly the A321 with long-haul configuration and Delta fly 767 with flatbeds and business class. 
Here you can see that consumers really benefit from competition and that doesn't matter where the airlines originate from or who the shareholders are. The impact of competition is really huge. It doesn't just stop at airfare and also ground and onboard experience. For example, fuel competition means fewer planes flying around. Even though Greta Thunberg would approve that, that means travel plans will have to be more flexible. Business travellers aren't going to like that. That also means the country isn't that connected anymore. Fewer international flights also makes Australia seem to be less globalised than it is. The impact of this go on and on. Another example might be the frequent flyer programme. If Virgin Australia's velocity go down, Qantas frequent flyer programme will have less competition. Then in the future, it might be more expensive to redeem a flight or it would be harder to earn points, whether it's from flying, credit card spending, or shopping at the grocery stores. The other reason we need Virgin Australia is because of tourism and jobs. If Virgin Australia go busted, 10,000 Virgin staff will become unemployed. A further 6,000 jobs will be lost from indirect jobs, such as airport security staff, airport check-in staff, and also airline catering staff. These people work for and serve Virgin Australia, but they're employed from a third-party company, such as Swissport if you're talking about airport check-in, and Gate Group for catering. Other than those 16,000 job losses, there will be more job losses Australia-wide. Less competition in the air means fewer flights. Fewer flights means fewer people flying around, including tourists. Tourism will be the other sector in the Australian economy that will be hit hard. The tourism sector in Australia has already been hit hard by the bushfire last year and now the global pandemic. According to Tourism Research Australia, Australia has more than 666 people working in travel-related businesses. That is more than two people in every 100 Aussies. And you can imagine how far this can go if one out of the two major airlines in Australia goes down. The Australian economy simply cannot afford this. Travel is currently Australia's fifth biggest export. In economics terms, fewer international tourists means that there'll be less money injected into the Australian economy notably the businesses within the travel industry. So fewer people will be employed, that means the household income becomes less, then those people will start saving money instead of spending them. This is a cycle where more people will be unemployed and more businesses go busted. Furthermore, the Australian government will earn less tax from us, whether it's income tax, sales tax or corporate tax. When the government has less money, it's not a good thing for anybody. Something that we're enjoying for free might not become free in the future, or the quality of it might become not so good. This includes infrastructure, public transport, public libraries, medical assistance, and so on. So to summarise my point, if Virgin Australia go busted, there'll be an adverse impact on the Australian economy. I'm not saying that everything I just said will happen. I'm not an economist. I don't work for Virgin Australia or any airline or the government, so I don't know. I'm just one world flyer. But think about that, Australia is so reliant on international travel, rural areas are so reliant on domestic travels. So it's definitely no good for anyone, except for the boss of Qantas, if Virgin Australia go busted. The third reason I like Virgin Australia, and I think they should survive through this global pandemic, is the people who work for them. Virgin staff are the greatest assets of Virgin Australia. Virgin cabin crew are some of the best I've ever met. They're always smiling, and they look like they truly love their job. They're always energetic even after a long haul flight. In fact, Virgin Australia is only 20 odd years old and they've been awarded three times the World Best Cabin Crew Award three times by airlines rating. This is truly impressive considering how young the airline is. The fourth reason I like Virgin Australia is simply because I like Virgin Australia. I'm from Hong Kong, I study at a university in Australia and I fly a lot between Australia and Hong Kong. When I started studying in Australia back in 2014, the average return airfare from Hong Kong to Australia cost about $1,200. The cheapest I've booked before Virgin Australia started flying to Hong Kong was $800 and that was with Qantas. Since Virgin started flying to Hong Kong in 2017, airfares to Hong Kong have dropped dramatically. The average return airfare now sits around $600. That's a 50% of fare reduction. The cheapest I've ever paid was $4.99 with Virgin Australia and the cheapest I've ever seen was only $475 return with Cathay Pacific. That shows how important competition is. Just one extra airline joining Cathay and Qantas can make the airfare drop dramatically. And it's just not Hong Kong. Virgin fly to LA, Bali and soon Tokyo. I've also noticed that since Virgin Australia launched Hong Kong, 
They partnered up with Virgin Atlantic, offering connection at LA and Hong Kong, and the airfares from Australia to London has also dropped a bit. Another cool thing I like about Virgin Australia is that they employ Hong Kong airline staff on board their Hong Kong flights. That's something I've never seen before with other airlines, and I think it's very cool. Another thing is that Virgin Australia is soon going to fly direct non-stop from Brisbane to Tokyo. They've also partnered up with Onipon Airways to offer connection at Tokyo, and they might start credit sharing soon, as well as offering their frequent flyers reciprocal benefits, such as lounge access and priority boarding. So Virgin Velocity members can enjoy priority boarding, lounge access, more baggage allowance, etc. When flying with ANA, that is great because Qantas and Japan Airlines are both one world. And such benefits already exist for their frequent flyers. Also, airfares to Japan is not very cheap. Once Virgin Australia start flying to Japan, and also when they partner up with ANA, I can see that airfares to Japan are going to drop dramatically. Well, that is something that's going to happen if Virgin Australia stay afloat. But imagine if they don't. I can see that flights to America will become very expensive in an increasing competitive market. Here, flying to LA is cheaper than ever before. In recent months. Airlines like United, Qantas, American Airlines, and Virgin offer really cheap deals between Australia and US. It's so cheap that Qantas and American can't afford, and they've partnered up and created a joint venture to fight against Delta and their partner, Virgin Australia. If Virgin Australia go busted, flights to America will become more expensive once again, and Delta will become vulnerable in the Australian market. So I think 11 minutes is enough for me to explain why I love Virgin Australia so much, and I. I really think that they should survive through this pandemic, and someone should really help out. To summarize all my points, Australian consumers need Virgin Australia to keep the airfares low and competitive. The Australian economy needs Virgin Australia, and all the Virgin Australia staff they deserve to be working for Virgin Australia. And here's a bonus point: even Qantas wants Virgin Australia to stay afloat. When Virgin Australia entered voluntary administration. Qantas posted this on their newsroom. This is a very tough day for all the people at Virgin, and the thoughts of everyone at the Qantas Group are with them. Their hard work has brought more competition to the market, which helped to create Jetstar and ultimately push Qantas to do better. Like everyone else, we want competition to continue. The fundamental strength of the domestic market, travel market, in Australia means that it's inevitable. Inevitable, sorry. So when people start travel again, we look forward to competing once more and continuing to serve Australia. So that's it for the video today. I wish Virgin Australia and their people all the best. Next week, back to normal. A Virgin Australia trip report. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. It won't hurt you. I upload a new trip report every Thursday, 12 p.m. Hong Kong and Perth time, 1:30 Adelaide time. And two in Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne. Also, please feel free to follow me on Instagram, add me on Snapchat, follow my page on Facebook. My Facebook page is all new. It's less than a week old, and it's crying for your like. I'm also posting my first ever vlog, so you don't want to miss out. I also want to say a big thank you to each and every of my patron. I can't explain how grateful I am to have all of you. Thank you all, and I'll see you again next week. Bye bye. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your cabin baggage stowed until the seatbelt sign has been turned off.